I was thinking about when it is appropriate to talk about death. And I saw an old woman who was contemplating death on the train the other day, and she was standing so thoughtfully, casting a sarcastic shadow over a sitting teenage boy who had yet to absorb the notion of his own mortality in any, substant in any substantive way, and thus would not even glance up at her face, let alone relinquish his seat. Despite her most exasperated sigh, despite her, her shifting of her body weight, no matter how diagonally the creases below her eyes leaned towards each other, and I knew that she was contemplating death because of the way that she stood with her feet apart and her shoulders slouched, because of how her mouth kept curling into an all-knowing grin, I knew that she was thinking about death because of the way that she periodically tilted and scratched her head through the stringy remnants of her formerly full head of hair and because the book that she was reading was titled, How We Die, Reflections on Life's Final Chapter by Sherwin B. Newland. As I juggle the air molecules between my bedroom walls to create the illusion of homeliness I consider love, how it is such a, a delicate thing, such an obnoxiously small little irritant, the minuscule mosquito that is zipping through my air molecules takes over the entire mood of the bedroom. And I consider love like a mosquito, humming cochlear, almost imperceptible, excepting for the buzz. If I have swatted your affection away, it is only in the panicked flutter of your intrusion. Make no mistake, I, I invite the itch. I leave bowls of stagnant water sitting in my heart. There are no right answers, only well thought out suggestions made out of tired wings and prehistoric ancestry as I shiver in the crossfire of my open window and pull an endless breeze from the outside world like a series of tied together silk scarves that I am extracting out of God's probably wrinkled sleeves. I consider love and how it, how it predates man. I consider love floating in a humanless world with, with no one left to agonize over it. I consider love manifesting itself organically, the, the force that wraps the vine of morning glories around a leaning bed of wild sunflower stalks, and I consider love the cleaning symbiosis of the mind, the pilot fish pecking scraps from the serrated teeth of the shark. I consider love in the way that someone else might consider love. I consider love in the way that someone else might consider it, a, a gift-wrapped nugget of nostalgia to be an implied promise that is marinated in the melancholy of forgotten loneliness, I consider love in its usually fragile state, two thin-shelled eggs that are wobbling dangerously close to the table's edge.